Can I tell you a personal story? I would love a personal story. Uh, I have just in the last probably two or three years realized that I'm creative. That's great. But you know what this? You know? Do you know what happened? Can you guess what changed in my in my life for that to 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 become the case? Okay, someone gave you positive feedback on something creative you did. Uh, no, no. Okay, I'll just tell you. Okay, no tell way me. you'll yeah, ever guess. Yeah, this is a I hard never game. read. I never read books. Mm. I hated reading. I hated reading. But then when I got when I really started to get interested in marketing, I went. Uh, DC started giving me all these books. Uh, he's old a school. reader. Uh, he's a huge yeah. reader. And he's so David Ogilvy shit. And what, what happening. was am, what was amazing is like I was so lucky to have him. You know, two years ago, two and a half years ago, start sending me. He was like my curator. He's like, here, take this book. And I'd be like, okay, and I would read it, and I'd be like, oh my god, this this is awesome because I'd never read something that apply. I hated reading in school and in college it's because it never applied to anything that I was doing. Yeah. But I, for the first time I'm reading a book and I'm like, Oh my God, this is exactly what we're trying to do with our website right now. And it was written 80 years ago. And I'm like, what else you got for me? And he starts giving me more and more. And it was once I started reading all those books, then I would just catch myself like, Oh, I got an idea. Yeah. I got another idea. So, I got another idea. And, and I've, and now it's become like, it's like Popeye and spinach. Like the more stuff that I can consume you and Ogilvy says it in the yeah. book, you unpack, like you, you unpack, like you reconsume all this stuff so, totally. and then you go away and you unlock your subconscious so, and then you're like, Oh shit. So Dave, here's what I want to talk about. So I think we have to have a little talk Okay. because we're now going to talk yeah. about, so in the book, I talk about the four laws mm. of creativity and the yeah. creative curve. The first law, Consumption. Consumption. So let's talk about it. Love it. So one of the things I found is exactly what you experienced. Yeah. All these creators I interviewed over and over again had some story that went like this. This book is just falling. So here's the book. Yeah. Now it's on the table. Yeah. Um, had some story like this. Like Ted Sarandos, the chief content officer of Netflix. I yeah. interviewed him. He, as 18 years old, got a job as a video store clerk. And he watched every single movie in the store. Amazing. Um, Beverly Jenkins, a famous novelist. Uh-huh. She lived right by a library. She was poor. Her escape. She went to the library, read every single book in the library. And so over and over again, you see this trend yeah. of these creatives consume huge amounts of content. I love that. Huge and, amounts. And I love it because probably Ted Sarandis, he doesn't have a, he doesn't have a, I bet you he doesn't have a framework for creating new content, right? He doesn't have some method that he, it's just like. It's subconscious. I, just give the guy a whiteboard yeah. and you're like, it's like this, it's like this, and you need this. And so the reason why is actually really interesting. So basically, it's kind of cliche when you yeah. talk about creativity, you talk about right brain, left brain, but mm. we're going to do it because okay. it's important. Right. So your left brain I is I still don't really do know the difference like between both. So logical yep. step-by-step processing. So right. like you're solving a math problem mm-hmm. and it's all conscious. You're or, like, or not solving Or not solving. Problem. Yeah. You're like <laughs> carrying the, like, the number. You're doing long division. Uh-huh. You're doing this whole thing. Uh-huh. And every step you're thinking about. It. And then you finally get the answer. You're like, I got the answer. Good for me. Your right brain is where you store more like distant metaphorical associations. So like think about when you're watching a stand-up comedian, you like get the joke. Mm. Like that's your right brain just getting it. Unless it's like Adam Sandler, then it's not funny. Mm. And so um, your right brain does all this subconscious processing. But what's interesting is that your right brain, how it does this processing, it's not actually special. It's just different. It's just quiet. It's just that this type of processing happens below your level of awareness and only once it finds these ideas once it connects these distant ideas together only then does it sort of pop into consciousness Uh and so the thing is that people mistake this for magic it's actually not magic so yeah every and it's funny because everyone says that which is like that idea that hits you in the shower or at the gym, or on a run, but why or somewhere does that else, right? Think about it. It's yeah. because your left brain, when you're like in the shower, your left brain isn't firing away exactly. trying to answer these like very present questions. So it's really, and it's really hard. It's a really, I think a lot of people struggle with the creativity part because especially if you're, if you have a busy job or something that you do is, is very taxing and or stressful, there's a lot of stuff happening, right? Like it's so important to be able to step back and get away from 100%. it. 100%. Because that's when you're that's when you're gonna have the clarity. So there's there's two things that really drive to aha moments. So aha moments are really well studied by researchers. And the first one is you have to have prior knowledge about what you want to have aha moments about. So the same thing where you were reading all these yeah. books. Yeah. The reason why consumption was such a big pattern was like it. you need to like if you're Ted Sarandos, watch a lot of movies to have all those mental models in place to connect. And I actually like and I realize that I don't I just actually don't like reading. Still I don't. But when I do it for the focus well, so I, I say I will read books about business yes. and marketing, right? You need to go deep. And then I can go deep. Yeah. And that's when I get the good stuff. Totally. And so that's the first step. The second step is you need to give yourself the space for your left hemisphere to like calm down. Mm. And so this is why like running, commutes, drives, all these things are so important. And if you don't make time for that, 
And what's amazing is like, I interviewed all these like super successful people, like literally like David Rubenstein is a billionaire. Yeah. And like, they make time to think. Right. And so like, if we don't have time to think we're not billionaires, right. We're just like these people running around like these people who have way more responsibilities. They even know how important it is. Yeah. And the funny part is, is like, I always get, so I try to like, I have, I have this personality where like, I have to, I think that I have to write everything down. Mm. Right. Cause I want to have good notes. I don't want to forget anything. I never want to be the person that's like, Hey Dave, you know, that thing we talked about last Tuesday. And I'm like, what? Like I always want to be on top of that. I should always be <laughs> just ahead, nod your head and smile, just managing mm-hmm. ahead. Right. But what I realized was like the more that I read and the more that I consume and do stuff, I remember, I give myself, I'm cutting my, selling myself short on how much I'm remembering. Totally. Right. And so then I'm trying to look, Hey, remember this, this framework from Ogilvy <laughs> or this framework from DC or this other thing. And then if you ask me randomly on a Saturday morning out for a run, I'm like, Oh, here's how it works. Yeah. You're like, Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. Totally. Yeah.